Hello mummers, Laura here and today we are chatting about the main labour hormone, queen oxytocin and just how important this hormone is at progressing labour along nicely. Enjoy! Hey mama, I'm sending you wonderful pregnancy vibes, it's time for you to guide you through, let's take some time for Hello mummers and welcome back to the Pregnancy with Physio Laura podcast. Today we are kicking off with episode two in the Birth with Confidence series, diving into the main birth hormone, queen oxytocin, and exactly why she is important at keeping labor moving. In this episode, we'll discuss where most of the oxytocin receptors are located in the body, how to stimulate these centers and how to create a beautiful oxytocin recipe or bubble to kick labor up if it is stalled or prolonged. Now, remember, this is episode two of a six part Birth with Confidence series with the incredibly wise Rhea Dempsey, a birth worker, childbirth educator, counselor and best selling author of the incredible books, Birth with Confidence and Beyond the Birth Plan. And don't forget, we have already released episode one in this series where we chat with Rhea all about the natural hormonal dance between a mother and baby and the importance of keeping this beautiful process undisturbed if possible. So make sure you go back and soak that episode up before we dive in deeper to exactly what oxytocin is doing today. Now, there is so much important information coming up in this Birth with Confidence series. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Pregnancy with Physio Laura podcast so you don't miss out. In this Birth with Confidence series, we'll be covering the role of adrenaline and endorphins in late stage labor and how women can mistakenly be thought of as exhausted rather than endorphined, why as a culture we need to reframe what labor pain means, the current issues in our birth culture and why it's not helpful to pity a laboring woman, crisis of confidence points that you may hit at different stages in your labor and so much more. We also have a bonus episode exclusively available to members inside the Pregnancy Posse where Rhea talks us through what she calls wild cards, which are life events or factors that may need to be addressed before birth as potential triggers that may pop up in labor and birth. Now remember this entire podcast series and all our other podcast series along with any exclusive member only bonus content is all live right now inside the Pregnancy Posse. So if you'd love to access all the bonus content and listen to or watch this entire podcast series right now, rather than waiting for future episodes to come out, then please do check out The Pregnancy Posse. I've taken my years of experience helping pregnant and postnatal women as a women's health physiotherapist and made this accessible to every wonderful woman online inside The Pregnancy Posse. So when you join the Pregnancy Posse, I will guide you week by week through your pregnancy with safe weekly workouts tailored to your specific week of pregnancy. I also do a weekly Q&A where I answer all of your amazing questions and there is a wonderful community forum where members all support each other along with an extensive resources library which will help you avoid googling every symptom that you have. Now, I would love to help you have a healthy, active, pain-free pregnancy. So just head over to thepregnancyposse.com to see what The Pregnancy Posse is all about and to trial it for seven days. Now, let's get into episode two of our six-part Birth with Confidence series. I know you'll love today's chat with Rhea about how to stimulate the wonderful and powerful birth hormone that is queen oxytocin. Enjoy. This was another big... um takeaway that I got from you Ria was talking about how we can build like that oxytocin bubble and habituating yourself to a little oxytocin routine while you're pregnant like you said even if you can't completely rejig your lifestyle but can you explain how women can boost their oxytocin maybe in just a little five ten minute routine yep. and also talk about I remember finding it really fascinating when you spoke about where the oxytocin receptors in the body were really yep. concentrated yeah 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 good okay so let's start with the sort of relaxation or I mean for some people it might be meditation might be relaxation some people maybe you're already doing that regularly in their lives so great any or you may have done some at some point in your life I don't don't think there's a magic bullet about a particular form but I think that having a space you know taking some time and particularly in those last few weeks every day every second day where you're deliberately checking into the body and chilling out and usually communicating with the baby, bonding with the baby, um, 
And I think it's very helpful to trigger it to, some, to music, yeah? And I mean, that music could, well, whatever it is that helps a, a woman chill out, it might be, maybe she does yoga classes and she uses what, what she has from her yoga class. Maybe she just loves the sound of waves or the wind in, in leaves, you know, or, or there's some other classical music or some other Enya for heaven's sake, I don't know what it might be. It could be whatever it is to use the same music and become habituated to it. Mm -hmm. Do it enough, good half hour block, maybe even longer, every few days to the same music, partner or whoever's going to be with you at the birth also needs to know which music this is but becoming habituated to it and remembering also there's another double payoff here because uh, you know from about seven months on the baby's hearing is complete so the babies in the womb are hearing so if you're if the mother is becoming attuned to and habituated to to relax to this particular trigger this particular music or set of sounds the baby also is being, you know, trained, regulated to be attuned to that music. So um, that's a payoff later when the baby's born to, to put that on to, for everybody to chill out if, if, you know, babies are getting distressed or what have you. So that's excellent. So to, to run a routine like that, so that that becomes really a deep part of their capacity to relax and release, and to settle down and to drop into their oxytocin and in fact the brainwave shifts to do that regularly during late pregnancy, then have that as a tool in terms of the birth with support people knowing that that's your thing. Mm. Um, you know, maybe if most women giving birth in hospital, so maybe they're doing okay at home, but then the trip in the car and getting to the hospital. So have that music on when you first get there, claim that space with that music, claim that chill out with that music. So really that's an important tool to use. Um, there's also, so to go back to, as you're saying, these oxytocin receptors. Mm. So in particular, there's what I call this oxytocin recipe. Mm. Um, and I think about it in particular, if, you know, things are getting, if you, I don't know, getting pressure in terms of going past due dates or people are feeling like, you know, it's, it needs to be happening faster or this or that. It can be used in a number of ways and a number of places and spaces. But the thing about it is to be trying to hit as many of the oxytocin receptors as you can at the same time. So let's look at a scenario that might be that a mother is getting pressure from the you know, where she's giving birth, that they, they have routine timing protocols about, you know, a week past due date and then we want to induce you or maybe 10, 10 days past due date or what have you. Um, so she's coming up against that, that clock. And as you say, then getting very stressed. And of course, that means oxytocin isn't. So she's going to have her music that she's already got going for her and then um, I think having a physio ball and this has got to be the, a good the correct height for women and so the height needs to be for the woman so that her her hips are higher than her knees and that the ball needs some some tension in it so that it's it's she can really grind down into it what what we're trying to do so she's going to be on the ball legs as wide apart as she can, sort of rotating on the ball and pressing down into the ball so that that tension from the ball itself, she's trying to sort of shorten her torso, if you like, and drive the baby deeper into her pelvis. Mm. That's one part of the, the routine. So she's doing that on the ball maybe for, I don't know, I think 20 minutes or so. At the same time as that, if she's on her own or maybe somebody else is with her, but if she's on her own, um, she's wanting to hit some of these other oxytocin receptors. So another one is we have oxytocin receptors. Most of us know this on the in our lips and on the inside of our lips. So I mean, she might have somebody there who's smooching with her or something, or, or perhaps, you know, sucking on an icy pole or, 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 or something so that we're triggering those oxytocin receptors. We have oxytocin receptors too. A lot of people don't know this, but we know, know it with particularly if people are cat people. 
you know, that we have oxytocin receptors down the outside of our forearms. It's a bit like that equates to the to a cat's back or a dog's back. Cats are much more responsive around it. I think dogs are a bit more independent about that, but cats. So I get the way to think about it is to think of stroking a cat, having a cat on your lap and stroking a cat to get it to purr. And um, if you've never done that, if anybody who's listening has never done that yet, then just try and find some friends or family who will let you have a practice. Because when we, or even if women or anybody's listening at the moment, if you close your eyes and just imagine doing that and imagine stroking that cat, certainly you're not going to be rubbing the cat up and down its back with its hair, rubbing its hair coming up you know, against the grain. Otherwise, the cat is going to really not be very friendly to you. You're going to be just stroking down the hairline, smoothing down the hairline. And again, if you're doing that with a cat, then you will start to stroke in what, what's called the mammalian stroking rhythm. And that mammalian, if you're watching wildlife documentaries or whatever, you see it, you know, some, some other mammal groups, you know, they, they lick in that rhythm, they stroke in that rhythm. It's really an oxytocin releasing rhythm. So get your cats out and have a bit of a go. And separate to that, back to what we're talking about. So the, the oxytocin receptors that are down the, around the, along the outside of our arm, particularly our forearm, so that's to be stroked down and then the hand to come off, not rubbed, but stroked and stroking as if you're imagining that the, that this is a cat so that you're getting, you're just instinctively getting that mammalian rhythm. Yeah. Don't have to think about it. Don't have to count it. Just do that. So that's, so then we've got the, the oxytocin receptors in the lips. We've got the oxytocin receptors on the outside of the, the arms. I mean, internally, what hopefully is trying to happen with the, the pressing down into the ball and the tension in the ball pressing up is to try and drive that baby deeper into the uterus and deeper down to apply pressure onto the cervix itself. So the cervix, on the inside of the cervix, we have oxytocin receptors and a baby that's well down and what's often called well applied to the cervix with the baby's head, you know, really nuzzled into and onto that cervix. The baby has, well, we all have oxytocin receptors on the crown of our head, really at the top of our head here. I mean, if anybody's ever used one of those wire orgasmatron things and that whole sparkly vibe that can come from that. This, this is really hitting oxytocin receptors. So you could be on the ball, you could have somebody, you know, with a, a gasmatrom on your, on, your, on your head, whatever. But thinking about the baby, so the baby in the womb, this part of the head, very, very sensitive. And if the baby's, this part of the baby's head touches on something solid, it will nuzzle into, it will nuzzle, it set, triggers off this nuzzling. And so a baby that's in good position and well down in the pelvis that is then touching into the cervix will nuzzle into the cervix. And so then this sends up more oxytocin receptors in the mother's body by triggering them in from the cervix. And also just mechanically, the baby's head is nuzzling into the cervix, which helps the opening of the cervix as well. So the baby's position and the baby doing that dance and the mother, mother encouraging that all hits all the oxytocin as well, queen oxytocin, as well as I say, sort of mechanically helping to open that cervix. So the baby's doing its bit. The babies are very, very helpful. Well, if they're in good position, if they're, you know, if they're not in great position, they might start trying to nuzzle out through your back, which is not so much fun or out through your hip or something. So certainly being mindful in late pregnancy of positioning and encouraging babies into what's now called optimal fetal positioning or optimal positioning, all that very important. And there's lots of information now around that that probably Laura, you speak about with, you, with, with women and so on. So they've no doubt got a background in that yeah. to get that baby so that that driving action of the baby, that triggering of the, uh, the oxytocin receptors and the driving the, the, from the baby's head is really being translated down through the mother's body for efficiency in the labor. Mm. Um, we then have, um, I mean, of course, the, the oxytocin receptors here can be smooching 
we also know that oxytocin receptors inside the vagina as well. And so lovemaking and penetration and orgasm and all of those things can, can beautifully be part of that um, releasing of oxytocin. Mm. Um, well, I could tell you some stories about closing the door, even in the bathroom en suite, but <laughs> certainly at home births, all sorts of ways we can get oxytocin going. But perhaps in most situations, depending on how comfortable people are feeling, then, then uh, some of these ways, if you're in a hospital, it's you know, on the ball and the massage and, and stroking and things maybe work as well. So and I think you said that areola was another big exactly, one. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So the because it's not the nipple, it's not really the nipple tweaking, as many people might think, oh yeah, I'm, I know what I'm doing with nipples. Well, that's well, uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, particularly in late pregnancy, because women their 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 breasts and nipples are getting very sensitive, ready for that baby. So it's really behind the areola, there's another layer of oxytocin and so as the mother is on the ball if there's somebody with her stroking down her arms if she's sucking an icy pole she might be hitting those ones and then she herself may be just sort of squeak you've got to be it's like I mean if in late pregnancy women are already finding that they can express a little bit of colostrum then the action, that's their correct action. They're, they're really getting behind the nipple and triggering those oxytocin receptors. So doing some of that as well can be part of that story. Just really trying to hit those key oxytocin receptors to boost that oxytocin mm. and to that can sometimes get a, you know, maybe it can be used if you have got a long pre-labor that's going off and on over a few days and maybe doing, you know, spending half an hour or so on the ball doing that three quarters of an hour then going for a good brisk walk have something to eat maybe have a bit uh, uh, some sort of a rest and maybe in the afternoon do the same thing again really yeah that could maybe just tip it all over mm. or if you're being you know there's an induction being talked about then so it can be used and sometimes again for women traveling into the hospital They've been going fine at home and then because of all of those changes or anxiety coming, then adrenaline can come in. And so then hit that whole routine again as well in the hospital. So a number of places where that could be very useful to, to rejig and keep the labor going. Mm, I love that. And it makes so much sense. I, when you said that to me, I thought, well, that's why head massages feel so good <laughs> because as babies, that's where yeah. we were positioned on the cervix to hopefully try and get down. Yeah. And um, I was just thinking then about how often people are trying natural induction methods and how love making or orgasms and yeah. nipple stimulation is often, you know, top up there. And it makes yeah. sense again, because it's trying to get that oxytocin. Um, and I was thinking even maybe with the curries, I, I could be wrong, yes. but you know, all the food, because we've got all those lip exactly. receptors, yes. you know, food is such a sensual and, you know, um, high vibe yes. thing to do. So it yes. just, it, I love how you tie it all together. Cause I'd never thought that that was the reason why. So I just yeah. love that you've put that together. And I personally have been using your advice around the oxytocin bubble. Yeah. Um, I've got a Xavier Rudd song. I sit on my ball. Uh, I do the outside of my arms yeah. and I do a bit of head massage yes. and I get goosebumps yes. all over my body within five minutes. And I remember you saying that that was a sign that the oxytocin was yeah. pumping. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. 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 It was amazing. Well, yes. Well, certainly that's what we see, you know, those of us who are at birth and have the privilege of seeing lots of normal physiological childbirth. If you see that flush up the mother's arms or you see those goosebumps or the pins and needles that she talks about, then we know there's big flushes of hormone, oxytocin in particular, a bit more complex than that, but particularly oxytocin. So, and if we see that happening, then we stay close because we know those contractions are going to ramp up again more and more, yeah. more and more strong, more and more efficient. So, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Good. And I love that it's it's so easily accessible. It's yes. all within you. It is something that you can access at any time. You don't need equipment. You don't need yeah. money. It's just, it's within us. So I love yes. that. Hey, mamas, Laura here. Oh, do you just have a great respect for the hormone that is queen oxytocin? Because I know I do. Like I said in the episode, I have been practicing my own little oxytocin routine at home. 
I listen to a beautiful song I like, I ground myself on a fit ball, stroke the outside of my arms, just like a cat as Rhea describes, <laughs> and I give myself a head massage, all while taking really deep belly breaths. And honestly, I find it takes all of about 30 seconds to feel relaxed and get goosebumps down my arms and legs, which is a fantastic sign that the oxytocin is pumping. So I really hope this episode has given you some inspiration to set up your own oxytocin recipe at home as a tool for labor progression, but also just to give yourself some good vibes on the daily. Now, if you'd love to learn more from Rhea, you can find her at birthingwisdom.com.au. And I'd love to hear from you over on my socials at PhysioLaura and let me know your favorite part of today's episode and whether you're going to set up an oxytocin recipe at home. Now, in the next few episodes of this Birth with Confidence series, we'll be chatting with Rhea about the role of adrenaline and endorphins in late stage labor and how women can mistakenly be thought of as exhausted rather than endorphined. Why as a culture, we need to reframe what labor pain means, the current issues in our birth culture and why it's not helpful to pity a laboring woman, crisis of confidence points and so much more. So if you haven't already, just subscribe to the Pregnancy with Physio Laura podcast so that you don't miss our upcoming episodes in this amazing series. And if you love today's episode and you want to jump right into the next four episodes in this Birth with Confidence series without waiting, you can find this entire series along with all our other podcast series live right now inside the Pregnancy Posse. So for most series of the podcast, remember we do also record exclusive bonus content for Pregnancy Posse members only. And in the bonus member only episode for this Birth With Confidence series, Rhea talks us through what she calls wild cards and how certain life events or social and emotional factors can pop up as triggers in your birth space. And remember, inside the Pregnancy Posse, you'll also find my weekly guided pregnancy workouts and extensive resources library on all things birth preparation, pelvic floor exercises, yoga, meditation, managing injuries during pregnancy, plus a wonderful community forum and weekly Q&A sessions with me. I would love to help you have a wonderful pregnancy, birth and postnatal experience. So just visit thepregnancyposse.com to see what the Pregnancy Posse is all about. I will catch you soon for episode three in this six part birth with confidence series where we'll be chatting about the role of hormones in late stage labor, particularly endorphins and adrenaline, which is really such a fascinating chat. So until then, mamas, sending you wonderful pregnancy vibes and enjoy the incredible journey that is pregnancy.